The next topic here is visualizing Java streams in action. What the heck does that mean? What does it mean to visualize something? And we're going to basically show, literally show visually how streams work. And I'll show you how they work visually and then we're going to talk about sort of how they work under the hood because the visualization is ever so slightly misleading at first glance. So as we talked about before, streams enhance flexibility because we can form a processing pipeline where we can compose multiple aggregate operations together in a nice sequence of fluent operations. And so each aggregate operation can filter and or transform the elements in the stream, much like a point of use filter system or filtration system that you might have in a house. So here's a visualization of things, and we're going to step through this one layer at a time. And the left-hand side is kind of showing you what's happening sort of visually. And then the right-hand side is just kind of showing you what's happening from a program point of view. So this is sort of what the code looks like. I've added a few extra uh, visual flourishes just to make it more interesting to look at. But this is basically just going to walk through this stuff one step at a time. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get an array of names. So you can see here we're going to get the array of names, Horatio, Laertes, Hamlet, and so on. And that's what this is going to look like. And then we're going to apply the of operator to that array of names. And what that will do is that will then create a stream of names. So what comes out of of is a stream of names that look like this. You can see that they're inconsistently capitalized. Next, we're going to go ahead and take that stream of names and put it through the filter operation. And the filter operation is going to lowercase the first character. I'm oh, sorry. It's going to lowercase each of the elements that were flowing through the stream and check to see whether it matches lowercase h. So what that means is uppercase H will match and lowercase H will match. And if it starts with L or O or G or whatever, it won't match. So what comes to that are a stream of names that start with either uppercase or lowercase H. But they haven't been made consistent with respect to capitalization and we haven't sorted them. So the next set step is we take the output of that stream, we pipe it into map, if you will, and we're going to call the capitalized behavior at this point. And that will then lead to a stream of capitalized names. You can see here a ratio in Hamlet. And then the next step is sorted. And what sorted is going to do, as you might imagine, is it's going to put them in lexicographic order or ratio. They've been consistently uppercased at that point. And the result will be a stream of sorted names. So that's basically the way we can think about this working. And you know, I don't know about you, but Obviously, this is the code. The code is the ground truth. But a lot of times, when you just look at code, you don't quite get the big picture because you're not seeing what's happening behind the scenes. Question? I, that's just what it's meant to do. I mean, I should, maybe I should have uh, named. So the question of why does capitalize just capitalize the first letter? Maybe I should have called the method capitalize first letter and lowercase all the rest. But that wouldn't have fit on the slide. So um, I should probably say, you know, consistently capitalize or something like that. Anyway, it, it does whatever it does. And in this case, it capitalizes the first letter and lowercases the rest. And we'll actually see an implementation of this here shortly so you can see what it's doing under the hood. So that's the visualization of things. And for sequential streams, this is a pretty good visualization. When we start talking about parallel streams, we'll learn that there's, there's other ways of thinking about this stuff. Um, Moreover, I should also hasten to add that it looks at first glance as though everything is done here from left to right, top to bottom. That's kind of the way it seems. It turns out not to be the case. The way it really works under the hood is that things work top to bottom, left to right. And that is very important when we talk about short circuiting operations. So when we get a little further along, we're talking about different types of intermediate operations. We'll talk about run to completion operations, and we'll talk about short circuiting operations. And you'll see that it actually supports short circuiting operations. And in that case, it's very important that the processing be done from top to bottom, left to right. And I'll talk more about how that actually works. But this is good enough at the moment to have a nice right brain perspective on how things work under the hood.